Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, I got another Vegas uh, oriented video coming back at you guys. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you again to everybody, all the subscribers out there. I actually just surpassed the 1000 subscriber mark. Uh, completely, completely blowing me away there, guys. I had no idea that it would ever get this big. I mean, a thousand people subscribed to my channel. Really? Me and my wife are like completely floored by that. So, uh, not only did you guys like completely floor, it just went beyond expectations there. So, uh, that's really huge, guys. It means a lot to us. It's very heartwarming. We've met so many wonderful people out there. Uh, I really can't begin to thank you guys enough. And uh, you all know who you are. I respond to all the messages you guys write on my, my videos. And um, give yourselves a round of applause. You guys really know how to make people feel special. And uh, thank you so, so much. Um, I know I said before I don't want the channel to get too big. Now I kind of want it to get just a little bit bigger. So maybe some AdSense comes in so I can give it to you guys. Because that's my intentions with any money I make with this channel. Is to just give it away to you guys. Because you guys absolutely rock, okay? Um, I can't get the smile off my face about that. It's it, it really is. It means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Okay. After a minute and a half of praise. Um, I thought I would do a, an interesting video here, guys. I know a lot of people have been writing on my channel. Uh, saying that they're going to be going to Vegas for the first time. Uh, and, you know, they, they have some questions, they have some concerns, and I really don't mind answering any of those questions or concerns. Uh, I do get a lot of personal messages on YouTube, too. Uh, average is right around three messages a night. Uh, and I usually find myself writing the same stuff. And I, I have a little clipboard here where I have, like, messages that I pre-wrote, and I just copy and paste them uh, sometimes because the questions really are that similar. Uh, and it just kind of takes a little time uh, out of the whole process, too. I will add personal touches to each message. I'm just not going to send robotic replies to everybody. Sorry. Uh, but, but hopefully this video can answer a majority of those concerns. So this video is entitled, 10 Things You Need to Know About Las Vegas Before You Visit. Now, I know this seems weird coming from somebody who's only been there once. However, we experienced the shit out of Las Vegas. Now, I want you guys to understand something. It, yes, we only went once. Most people only go to Vegas for a weekend and that's it. Okay, so they spend two nights there, like a Friday and a Saturday, all right? We were there for seven days, so if you were to go by the weekend theory, uh, that would mean we spent seven days, uh, two, four, that's three, three weekends. That'd be like three visits, right? So I think we're experienced enough there in that sense. So number one, no, you cannot walk everywhere. My biggest mistake, uh, was my underestimation of the size of Vegas and how you navigate Vegas, how you get around. Uh, before I went to my trip to Vegas, I was on Google Earth looking at the roads, the maps, and I remember telling my wife many times, man, the walk from the Cosmopolitan to the Stratosphere does not look that bad. You know, like, I do a lot of jogging in the summer months. Like, I can run a 5K and not break a sweat, okay? That's actually quite normal for me. Um, no, that's not the case. You can't walk from the Cosmo to the Strat. I mean, you can. Uh, in the summer months, in that blistering heat, you are in trouble, okay? Vegas is not a straight line. You'll notice, actually, if you go to Google Earth, and uh, you'll see these pedways that go across the street. Uh, many times, you have to cross those pedways to go forward. It's just the way it is. There's... Never a straight line. There's always stairs. Well, there's escalators outdoors, but guys, these don't always work. And uh, you have to be careful because it could be taxing on your back, on your legs, your feet. You know, you got to wear comfortable shoes and stuff like that. So you're not going in a straight line. You're up and down, up and down in that straight line, and you're going across the pedway, then up and down, up and down. Straight. Oh my God. It's a half hour from the Cosmopolitan to the Mirage. You know, like it's really, really tough. So. Plan a little bit more in your budget for possibly the Deuce, uh, the SDX. These are the two uh, local uh, transits, public transit buses, or maybe even a taxi. You can use other services like Uber. Uh, this is a, usually more affordable than a taxi. Uh, and to try and get yourself around the strip, because you want to save your stamina uh, for the stuff that you really want to do in Vegas. Like if you're visiting like Hoover Dam, Grand Canyon, Valley of Fire, if you want to go to different 
Pawn Stars, you know, uh, Danny Coker, American Restoration. Like, there's so many things that you can see in Vegas. You want to kind of keep your stamina for those things. You don't want to burn yourself out and then be tired while you're doing something that you wanted to do. Okay, that's there. That's just very unfortunate. We were suckers for that. We actually did do some walking. We walked from the Luxor all the way to the Mirage. I'm not joking. Me and my wife did that. By the time we got there, we were death. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like it was it was really bad and like I said, I'm a conditioned runner. I can run a 5k. It's not a problem for me uh, My wife too. She she does some jogging in the summer months, you know uh, She does have some cardio built up. This was just really tough to hurt on the legs the heat Remember we were there in October and I know for people in Las Vegas uh, October is one of their not colder months, but it's definitely not July or August but October to us Canadians in Las Vegas, it's, it's, it's you know, 30 degrees. It's tough, okay? So uh, you can't walk everywhere. Plan around that. Uh, number two, if you're going to spend a lot of money gambling, try to do it at the same property, uh, preferably the property that you're staying at. Um, and the reason being is the comps. Now, I know everybody wants to go in and visit other casinos. If you want to do that, just kind of keep your betting amounts in the other casinos to a minimum. Uh, maybe if there's a machine that's not at your local or at the casino you're staying at and you see it somewhere else, obviously you're going to want to sit down and play it. Uh, try to keep your bets to a minimum. Just to enjoy the machine and, you know, try to get your satisfaction out of the machine because you don't want to put $100 and have a drain and be like, oh, fuck, I didn't play long enough. Here's another 100 bucks. Next thing you know, you find yourself getting sucked into the to the whole, oh no, now I got nothing for my casino, the comps ain't gonna be so good. Because remember, um, the more you play at the casino that you're staying at, your future stays are gonna be less expensive because of the comp system. Now, in our case with the Cosmopolitan, uh, after our third night of staying there, uh, the comps started coming in like crazy. And for our next trip now, the seven nights that we're gonna be there, is all comped. That includes the resort fee. We're not going to get charged the resort fee. We're not going to get charged the hotel room. Uh, all our meals are going to be comped. So remember, we're living for free for them seven days, uh, just as long as I play the same amount of play that I did in my last trip, which I fully intend to do. Actually, I'll probably be spending a little bit more on our next trip uh, because I want to film as much as I possibly can and get as much material as I can for YouTube. Um, so yeah, definitely keep your dollars uh, to your casino. Now with the M Life system, if, if you guys are, although I am going to recommend the Cosmopolitan, it's the best place to play in Vegas, hands down. They have the best comp system anywhere in Vegas. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased. It's true. Go look at the statistics. Go look at the facts. The Cosmopolitan's comp system is better than anywhere else, okay? Uh, however, for those people who are already loyal or want to be loyal to a casino like uh, MGM Grand, oh, I wouldn't recommend the MGM Grand, or Bellagio Mirage, which I can recommend, two great casinos. Uh, you're going to get a player's card that's M Life. M Life works at many casinos on the strip, including Bellagio, Mirage, MGM Grand, the New York, New York, and there's there's quite a few more. So, as long as you're playing at those casinos, all your points will get accumulated onto that one card and be put into the one system. So, no matter which casino you play at, uh, you'll still get your rewards on that one card. So that is a big plus. Okay. Uh, there are different ones like I think the Venetian and the Palazzo you could play at those two casinos and combine on one card uh, There is a few properties like that Cosmopolitan unfortunately is a standalone property. Okay, it's owned by the Blackwater group and But I recommend the Cosmopolitan if you're gonna go to Vegas guys. I recommend the Cosmo. It really is the best So yes, try play at the casino that you're staying at so the comps are better. Okay, you're just gonna get more out of your trip Okay, freebies are cool. All right number three Smoking is absolutely normal in Vegas, okay, for you non-smokers. Uh, I had a feeling that there were, was going to be a lot of smoking in Vegas. Um, I was sh a little shocked by the amount. Every casino was full of it. Um, there was no way of getting around it, okay. The only thing that I could do for myself was to go into a casino that was larger, uh, that wasn't so, you know really confined and kind of claustrophobic because the bigger casinos obviously are going to be a little easier on your lungs because the smoke can rise and uh, there were some casinos that had better ventilation than others so if you're a non-smoker do your homework about 
the air conditions, okay? Like how the quality of the air. And you can find out a lot on forums, uh, on different uh, websites. Just type a Google search, you know, uh, for these types of casinos and you will get that feedback and that information that you need. Um, in my top five and worst five casino video, I do uh, elaborate on the smoking, uh, the Cosmopolitan. You couldn't even tell that it was a smoking casino because the ventilation was so good and it's a large property. Uh, as with the Bellagio, it was really good in there. The New York, New York was absolutely fantastic. Uh, bad casinos would be the MGM Grand, oh, really, really bad in there. Oh, the El Cortez. Oh, every time I say that name, I get a fucking headache. Uh, the Flamingo was pretty bad too. The ones on Fremont, Fremont Street are going to be, you know, the older casinos and the smoke is kind of uh, a little worse. Uh, but sometimes the Fremont casinos are a little more entertaining and you just go go look at my other video for that. So yeah, expect the smoking guys. Just do your homework if you want to try and, and uh, steer away from those, uh, you know, the smoky casinos. Number four, you are going to see a lot of homeless people on the strip, okay, and on Fremont, and you're going to see a lot of uh, freaky people. They're not weird, okay, they're not, they're, they're, they're just like us, okay, uh, they are just freaky. They don't mind doing freaky things to try and support themselves, and I guess in the end, uh, you can commend them on that, but you have to expect it. It's heartbreaking because when you watch documentaries, when you when when you when you see the glamour of Vegas through tourism videos or whatever, they don't show you that side of Vegas, and it's really heartbreaking because there really is a lot. I mean, a lot of homeless people. When we walked from the Luxor to the Mirage, I I was counting the homeless people at first because I was like, I really wonder how much it is. I lost count after like 40. I'm serious. They're there. They have signs. They have little buckets that you put money in if you want to give. It's heartbreaking. It really fucking is. I, I, I'm sorry for my language. It's just, I guess in any big city you can expect that. It was just heartbreaking for us because we, we come from a, an area where people are really giving and we make sure that there's no homeless people. We don't rely on government agencies. We kind of come together and help, you know, help one another. And we make sure that that sort of stuff doesn't happen. I guess things can get out of hand when you have a city such, you know, as large as Vegas, and uh, it's really hard to combat that problem. Um, what I would do is I would give to five homeless people every day, okay, and five dollars per homeless pe person. I know it doesn't, five bucks is not much. It can mean the difference to them, and if ten other people like me give five bucks, well, then do the math. It's fifty bucks. It's gonna feed them for that day. Now. Some people would say, well, they're just going to spend that on drugs or alcohol. If you're going to give to them, just give it unconditionally, okay? Don't, don't do it with the intent, like, like, don't judge them, okay? If you're going to give, do it unconditionally. If not, don't give it all, all right? I like to think that these people are doing it because they really need to. I know there's a lot of drug addict homeless people in Las Vegas. I've seen a documentary on YouTube uh, that kind of really goes into that dark side of Vegas, and uh, who knows, maybe they're saving that money to get the hell out of that mess, okay? And that's kind of the positive thinking that you got to keep in mind. As for the freaky people, expect it, especially if you're bringing kids on Fremont Street. You're going to see girls with uh, electrical tape over their nipples and a tiny little, it looks like a maxi pad, okay, covering their genital area. And that is completely normal, okay? That is, there's nothing wrong with that. Fremont is just that sort of entertaining side to it. You just got to expect it. You're going to see fat men in women's bikinis. You're going to see a guy with a sign that says, fuck you, with his middle finger up and a tip pocket at the bottom. It's just the way it is. Uh, lots of great entertainment from uh, uh, sidewalk musicians, I call them. And these guys are m just amazingly talented. I seen a little boy there. He wasn't any older than, I would say, maybe seven or eight years old. And he had uh, homemade drums and homemade cymbals and he had that all set up and he sounded so amazing unbelievably amazing. i couldn't believe the beats that was coming out of that system i found myself just sitting there for 10 minutes listening to this kid and at the end i gave him a 20 dollars bill i said dan you really did earn that 20 dollars 20 dollars bill and the sad part was we went up vegas up fremont and we come back and we noticed that his family it was 
he, his mother and his father were there and they went and got food, which I can only assume was probably with the money that he was making. So that little boy was feeding his family. Fucking job well done. Like you're really, really learning an amazing talent, not as a way to just entertain people, but to support your family. It should be the other way around. The parents should be supporting the kids, but this guy took it amongst himself to support his family. Oh my God, that's just unbelievable. I gave unconditionally and I will do it. If I see him there again, I'm gonna give him a $50 bill. So, amazing. So yes, you will see those types of people in Las Vegas, okay? Number five, don't be a sucker and buy your friggin' souvenirs on the strip. Oh my God. There's very few uh, souvenir shops on the strip itself, but they are there. And it's super expensive. I mean super expensive. A Las Vegas, little Las Vegas sign, like 25, 30 bucks. Go to Fremont. That same Las Vegas sign is one dollar. I'm not joking. We compare. I couldn't believe it. And uh, I bought one thing at a strip, uh, a strip uh, souvenir shop, and it was just a little frame. That's all it was, and uh, just one that commemorates the fact that you were in Vegas. Okay, and it was just a small one. It was just like a little five by seven frame, and I paid fifteen dollars for it. And I figured, well, it's Vegas. All the friggin' souvenirs are going to be marked up. We're not going to buy much. So I bought it. When we went to Fremont, I seen that exact, the, no difference whatsoever, the exact same frame for a dollar. And I said, well, I'm not going to go get my money back. I'm not going to be an asshole. You know, I just, I was that sucker. You know, I, I should have known better. Uh, so Fremont Street is loaded with souvenir shops. I think there's maybe five of them on Fremont. And... These are huge, huge souvenir shops. Some of them have escalators because there's multiple, multiple floors. So no matter what kind of souvenir you want, guys, it's going to be on Fremont Street. I can guarantee you that. So do all your souvenir shopping up on Fremont. Save yourself some friggin' money, okay? And it's the same thing for shopping. Don't shop on the strip. If you're going to go to the forum shops at Caesars, shopping for clothes, oh my god. A $50 shirt turns into a $500 shirt. I'm not kidding. 10, sometimes 50 times the markup. That's how, like, I'm serious. It's so bad. Now, I do Armani clothing shopping. I love, like, Armani clothing. It's just who, who I am. I, uh, especially as a businessman, I like to wear, like, nice suits and stuff like that whenever I go to meetings. And my wife, as well, she likes her Michael Kors, her Louis Vuitton, her Kate Spade, all that stuff. We seen a purse at the forum shop. Okay, a purse, it's just a purse. Something that carries around her personal belongings. This purse was $20,000, 20 grand. We've seen a watch that was $200,000. Most people couldn't afford the sales tax on that item, okay? But this purse, this particular purse, because we were looking at it, my wife was like, wow, it's a nice purse, you know? There was no price tag on it. And we were looking and then somebody come over and said, actually, it's on sale today for only 20,000. <gasps> $20,000, that's, my budget for Vegas was $30,000. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not interested any longer in this purse. And we backed away and we went down to the outlet mall and that's on the southern part of the strip, okay? You just have to type it in the Las Vegas outlet mall, premium outlet mall, south strip. And uh, actually it's it's way south, like it's way south than Mandalay Bay, but you can't you can't miss it. It's, it's a beautiful spot, almost right across from the 7-Eleven there. Um, that same purse, 800 bucks, Can well, 850 Canadian, it was right around 600 US down at the outlet mall. And the exact same purse! I couldn't believe it! Kate Spade, like what the fuck? You don't charge somebody 20 grand for a Kate Spade purse? It's not that high end. Kate Spade is, yes, they're more of like a mid to low high end, I guess you could call it. It's not 20,000 high end, and the forum shops, and some people do fall for that. Some people go into a casino and win 50 grand, go spend 20 grand on a purse that they think is high end. So uh, yeah, shop at the premium mall. Don't shop on the strip. Oh my God. Okay, so uh, the next one. Number six, be careful on the strip, off the strip and at nighttime. You're, you can feel and, and, and you are safe on the strip, okay? Especially during the daytime. You're not, nothing bad's gonna happen to you. If you have kids, you, you could feel relatively safe because there's so many people, okay? Nobody's gonna come up and rob you or put a gun to your head or your face. You are safe. We never met anybody that we felt threatened by when we were in Las Vegas, okay? 
Uh, like I said, you do see weird people, homeless people and all that. These people are not there to harm anyone, okay? They're so down on their luck, I, I, I don't see them getting up and committing a crime. It's just, I don't think so. However, if you venture off strip or at nighttime on the strip, now nighttime is when some of the crazies can come out. You see a lot of drug peddling. Now our bedtime is right around midnight, but I remember going outside around, uh, I think it might've been around quarter past midnight and uh, it didn't take long for somebody to come up to me and offer me uh, a little bag with look like cocaine in it. And uh, all I did was I went outside just to see what it was like, maybe get a little breath of fresh air before going to sleep. And a guy came up to me asking me, hey man, you wanna stay up all night so you can gamble? I got what you need. I'm assuming it's cocaine. Cocaine kind of gets people wired. And, um, you know, I said, no, man, I just I need some fresh air, some, you know, I just lost big on the table back there. And he's like, oh, man, no, no problem. All right, all right. But it only took five minutes for that to happen, you know. So be careful at nighttime, okay? And uh, don't venture too far off the strip because you can end up in some pretty uh, places that aren't so innocuous. You, you want to make sure... And, and stay in a, in a safe zone, okay? So if you're there, stay on the strip, stay on Fremont, use a taxi, don't walk, you know, because the distance between the stratosphere and Fremont is is quite, quite, quite a distance there, and it's pretty shady area. Um, you wanna be careful, all right? So just be careful. I don't wanna hear of any of you guys getting robbed or, or worse. So keep safe out there, folks. Number seven, you can gamble everywhere in Las Vegas. Everywhere is game, man. No matter where you are. You want to gamble at the airport? Gamble at the airport. You want to gamble at a restaurant? Gamble at a restaurant. Me and my wife visited M Madame Tussaud's Wax Museum. There was a fucking slot machine in the middle of the Wax Museum that you could play on. Okay? They're everywhere. Convenience stores, restaurants, airport. Everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So, I guess I'm going to warn you in that same sense that don't gamble there. Don't gamble at a, a slot machine that's going to be in the middle of a wax museum because the payback percentage on that machine is going to be so low. You're just going to, you might as well burn your money. And that, that's the same for the airport. The airport slots are, they're, 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 they're a sucker bet. It's, it's just that simple. Now, I said that in my previous video, in my worst uh, casinos of Las Vegas, I included the airport there. And one person had linked me to a video uh, of somebody playing at the airport who won big, like 700 bucks. And I said, well, ask that person how often they play there and what their ratio is. <laughs> they were pretty surprised to find out that that was the only time the guy had won there. Uh, he'd lost money every other time. I'd say one in 50 people might take money out of a machine there and it won't be much. Okay, it's just a sucker bet. Stay away from slot machines that are in places that can't afford to put the payback percentages too high because they can't make money on them, okay? If they only have a few machines, the payback percentages are going to be a lot lower to make up for the cost, okay? So keep, like I said, it just goes with the point that I made earlier for, for number two was to stay, stick at the one property that you're staying at and keep your play there if possible, all right? So stay away from the, uh, the airport and those other places. You don't want to get tied up into that. Uh, number eight can be the... Uh, hidden costs and the expenses of Vegas. Now, you book a trip online, you look at the uh, hotel website. Hotel website says, oh, it's gonna be $199 a night. You're like, oh, okay, you make a strict budget. You wanna stay there for three or four nights? You're like, okay, I got six, 800 bucks, whatever, and that'll cover these four nights. I got this much for food, I get this much for travel, I got this much for gambling, so on and so forth. You have your budget there. Come checkout time, you find out there's a resort fee for every night that you're there because almost every casino in Vegas has re resort fees. There's only a very small percentage of casinos that don't carry resort fees, but they are there. They don't really tell you that up front, guys, about the resort fee. You only find that out, a lot of people only find it out come time to check out and they're stuck there with a bill they don't know how to pay. A lot of people are in that boat. They don't know how to pay the resort fees. You have to be careful. If your hotel is $199 a night, chances are the resort fee is going to be anywhere from $30 to $50 a night. I'm, I'm not kidding. This resort fee is for the pool, the free internet, all that sort of stuff that, you know, I guess some casinos uh, will work with you on that. They won't offer you internet. I don't know how it works. I've seen some people that were able to get out of it, they, but they were not, not able to take advantage of like the, the free internet, the gym, the pool. So just keep that in mind. 
but you have to take into consideration those costs. It, it, I'm telling you, uh, you don't want to be left there with a strict budget and then not have enough money to return home. Uh, it's not a bad situation. It's not, it's not a good situation to be in. It's, it's quite bad. Just don't get caught up in that. Just, it's very expensive in the sense that maybe you should go to a lower property, a lower end property that doesn't carry a resort fee or anything like that because $199 a night plus resort fee, uh, if you're especially from Canada, it's expensive in the sense that 200 plus 30 to 50 is 200, that's almost 300 Canadian dollars a night, all right? Unless you plan on playing a lot of money in their casino to get that comped, be very, very careful, okay? You just don't wanna get caught up into that stuff. It's very tough. All right, now, number nine, taxis. It's expensive, man, to travel in a taxi. Um, I know with taxis, I don't take a taxi locally. I did whenever I was younger. You know, you're talking like, for, to go from one end of town to the other end of town, like five bucks right now. I live in a, a, a small little city. Actually, I wouldn't even call it a city. It's a, it's a town. And from one end of town to the other, it's five bucks. I'm not joking. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. You know, it's not all that, that expensive. Now, if you take a taxi from the airport to the strip, 40 bucks. That's what it is, it's $40, okay? 40 freaking dollars plus tip. Vegas, you have to expect to tip everywhere you go. It's a service-based industry. Everybody is making, or, or I should say, not making very much money per hour, so they rely on tips. You're talking waitresses, uh, any of the taxi driver, anybody that's serving you deserves that tip, or hopefully they deserve that tip, you know what I mean? So you have to expect to tip everywhere you go just expect it no matter where you go you tip you tip everybody the girls that give you the free drinks when you're playing tip them because if you don't tip them the first time they're not going to come back and offer you another free drink okay it's just i guess the rule of thumb in vegas is one dollar per drink uh, depending on what we my wife are drinking we tip anywhere from two to three dollars a drink uh and we didn't mind that um we're so used to paying five dollars plus tip at that old casino our local casino that we used to go to. And uh, so we weren't all that, you know, hesitant to to give that tip to those people serving us. Just expect, expect it, okay? The taxis are expensive. And if you are going to go from different parts of the Strip, Fremont, downtown, whatever, you wanna make sure that you keep those costs in mind. Uh, we went from the Mirage to Fremont in a cab and it was $20 plus tip. And a lot of these taxi drivers, uh, go the long routes, okay? They try to tell you that, oh, the strip is too busy to go on right now. It's going to take too much time. The cabs charge you based on the distance, okay? Now, if they take you off to the freeway or whatever and they're going around taking the tour, it's going to cost you a fortune. If you stay on the strip, it's going to cost you less. Now, when we went to Fremont, it cost us $20 plus tip, so I gave the guy 25 We took the highway. We went on the freeway. We went up and around and it cost more. When we went back, we went from Fremont to the fucking Bellagio and it cost $7. So it was a $13 difference, in, but the cab driver was pissed off at us. He, he wouldn't even talk to us in English anymore. He was talking to us, talking to us in a different language and he was really pissed off uh, because all the business that he would have lost because the strip was busy. Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. And every time he got a red light, he would be like, and he'd grumble and I'd be like, holy fuck, this guy's an asshole. Like, you know, it's a service-based industry. Be nice to your customer. When I got to that cab, he was the only person in Vegas I didn't tip. I gave him the exact $7 that it cost for my trip. If he would have been nice, I wouldn't have mind giving him a $10 tip because it was a long, it, it took almost like 30 minutes to get there on the strip, so. I'm sorry I put him through that. I'm sorry I made a decision to use him as a taxi driver to begin with, okay? He was very, very, very arrogant and rude. But anyway, taxis are expensive and uh, expect a tip everywhere. Uh, number 10, gambling. Las Vegas just isn't about gambling. There's a lot of other things you can do in Las Vegas. A lot of people say Vegas has no culture. That is bullshit. There's a lot of culture in Las Vegas. Actually, if you're going to look at it in terms of a global culture, 
there's people there from all over the planet. We met people from China. We met people from the United Kingdom. We met some amazing African people there. We've seen a lot of Mexican people, Canadians, you know, all over the globe. Las Vegas is the United Nations in that sense. You see so much culture, and I love to talk to people. I actually, uh, you know, I can speak French, you know, je peux parler français aussi. I do live in Canada. French is very common, and, and well, not in Canada. French is actually a very minority language in Canada. I happen to live in New Brunswick, which is the, on the only official bilingual province in Canada. And, uh, you know, I do speak French. I was able to speak with people who were from Paris, who were from Belgium. Uh, Africans, there's a lot of French in Africa, and I was able to speak with them. I also can speak a little bit of German, not much, just a little bit, uh, enough for uh, the very basic of conversations, but whenever I did come across a German couple, I would say hello, or, or, or strike up a little conversation in German, and then I would have to tell them I'm not fluent in it, you know what I mean? But the fact that I tried made a world of difference to, to them, you know? But there's a lot of culture in that sense. Um, as far as the culture in Vegas, of Vegas, there's culture there too. You have to understand why Vegas was built. Uh, and that is a, a spin-off of the Hoover Dam. So when the Hoover Dam was built, and you gotta remember this is in the midst of the Great Depression. People needed work, they were willing to do any kind of work to support themselves and their families. Uh, a lot of people were living in Boulder City um, during the building of the Hoover Dam. Uh, prostitution, gambling was illegal in Boulder City, and it still is to this day. Boulder City has no gambling whatsoever, and it's just southeast of Vegas, just southeast of Henderson. And uh, so close to Vegas, you'd figure they'd take advantage of that, that market. And no, they don't want, don't want gambling, don't need it, don't want it. It's just, it's still illegal to this day. So the people that were staying there wanted to have, you know, they were working all the time. They wanted a way to let off a little steam, have a little fun. This is how Vegas got its start, was from these people. Um, different criminal organizations like the mob, seeing this market, seeing this demand, started pouring their dollars into building these casinos. Um, and that's how it came about. You know, the, Las Vegas was ran by the mob for many, many years. And I guess you'd have to credit Howard Hughes uh, for coming in and taking over and make, making it more government controlled, more corporation controlled. Uh, and eventually to what it is today. Um, you know, Vegas has a lot of culture in that sense. You can still visit the Mob Museum in Las Vegas and learn about that culture. Uh, so Vegas does have that, and it also offers a mirage, no pun intended, of other things that you can do. Go to the Hoover Dam. Go check that out, guys. If you're going to Las Vegas and you don't do the Hoover Dam, you're doing it wrong. What a marvel. You see pictures of it, you see videos of it, you can't get a scale. like. I've seen pictures of everything before I went, you know, the views from the Cosmo, the friggin' uh, Hoover Dam, all these other things. And I was like, oh, it doesn't look all that special. We'll go anyway, blah, blah, blah. We get there and you're floored, you're blown away. Oh, so huge, man, so huge. The view from the Cosmo is three times as high as it is, as it looks on a video, you know what I mean? The strip is 10 times smaller than what it actually looks like when you're there in person, okay? So, you know, the Hoover Dam, the Grand Canyon, Go to Pond Stars, you know, go to the Valley of Fire, uh, Danny Coker, American Restoration. There's a lot of free things to do in Vegas. You know, go look at the Bellagio Fountains. Like, these are just very few ideas of a big horde of ideas that are out there for free things to do in Vegas. Go check out the shows. Some of these shows are absolutely amazing. Um, the Beatles, Cirque du Soleil, the love, love Cirque du Soleil. That was a mind-blowing show. Not really my style, but I can appreciate the amount of artistry, the amount of dedication and training that goes into a show like that. It was, I was amazed. Even though it's not for me, I was amazed by it. I said, it's a, I never, like, I've been to plays before, uh, Fredericton Playhouse here in New Brunswick. I, not really my thing. A lot of people get moved by plays. Like you see people watching this live play and they're crying and I was always like, uh, why? I was an emotional, I got into an emotional state when I was watching Cirque du Soleil, uh, Love. It's just, it sets off like an emotion in you and it was really, really worth the price. Uh, I felt like if I wouldn't have done it, I would have lost that part of Vegas and I'm so happy I did it. And uh, since I did the Cirque du Soleil, Love, 
we are going to see the O, Cirque du Soleil O at Bellagio when we return. So I'm actually looking forward to it now. I wasn't looking forward to the Beatles' love whenever we went on our first trip, but I'm actually looking forward to the O show. So, um, you know, Chris Angel, magician, and there's a lot of magicians you can see in Las Vegas. I mean, you can go see uh, Chris Angel, you can go see David Copperfield, Matt Franco. There's definitely a, n no small selection there for magicians. A lot of Cirque du Soleil shows, oh my God. And just hundreds of other shows. If you want to go see a concert, there's always a concert in Vegas. There's always some sort of musical acts going on, you know. Uh, there's those other ones, the uh, ventriloquist shows. Terry Fader would be an example. Uh, I think there's another one there too. Anyway, there's plenty of shows in Vegas. Okay, you, there's you got and you got to check this stuff out. You can't just sit in a casino and spend your money and lose it all. You know, Vegas has so much more to offer that you don't want to confine yourself to that that one that one thing okay go and experience vegas for everything vegas has to offer and you will come back home with more memories and a better understanding and a more appreciation for las vegas and a whole okay just go take in those shows and, and and do these free things it'll really stretch your budget out but more importantly it'll it'll open your heart and your mind to the total las vegas experience okay now that's my 10 things. Uh, I'll give you a bonus one here, number 11. I know it's 36 minutes, holy fuck, you guys are gonna get mad. Okay, the weather in Las Vegas. Always keep in mind the weather, uh, especially if you're not from Vegas, if you're from the north, uh, especially uh, you Canadians out there, fellow Canadians like, like me. Uh, the summer months can get hot in Vegas, unbelievably hot. And uh, some people kind of blow that concern away by saying it's, well, it's, it's a dry heat, and there's not a lot of humidity to it. Here in Canada, during the summer, the summer months, the humidity, 100% humidity, 30-degree uh, weather uh, makes it seem like it's 50 degrees. You know what I mean? Like, that humidity can really, really just salt in the wound, you know? Um, doesn't matter if it's dry heat or not. Heat is heat, okay? So in the summer months, you're going to want to stay hydrated. You're going to want to make sure that you step into a casino or a building that's air-conditioned every once in a while. Because it can get pretty flipping hot in Las Vegas. Even in October when we were there. We were there on October 9th, I believe. And around October 9th here in the Maritimes, uh, most more specifically northern New Brunswick, um, October 9th, you're talking almost right around the freezing mark. So you're maybe two, three degrees above freezing. And uh, quite cold because, uh, you know, we were definitely heavy shirts on, you know, light jacket, pants. Some people even wear gloves and a jacket. Like it, it gets pretty, pretty cold here around the first second week of October. And uh, when we went to Vegas, it was still blistering hot in October. So I, I mean, for us Canadians, we were driving in a cab from the airport to the Cosmo when we got there. The fucking cab driver had the windows up. You know, us Canadians are in the back, like dripping sweat, like almost dying of the heat. And we're like, we, I remember asking him, "Do you mind?" turning the air conditioning on or putting the windows down and he's like well it's pretty cold right now you sure you want to do that and i'm like dude i'm from fucking canada turn the fucking air conditioning on put the windows down but to them it was it was a little chillier you know 30 degree weather like me fucking beating sweat and him not even breaking a sweat kind of like chilly like he said and i couldn't i couldn't believe that it just goes to show you how people acclimate to certain weather and uh i guess having said that Vegas does have its cold months, okay? Vegas experiences a winter too, and they do get snow, although it's rare, uh, very rare. Actually, the mountains in Vegas, like Mount Charleston and surrounding mountains, it's pretty, not common, but it does happen more often than, than people think. The mountains are snow covered, although Vegas has no snow itself. Mount Charleston and all surrounding mountains do end up with a lot of snow on them. So you're on the strip and you're looking at these mountains and you do see the snow. Uh, Vegas right now, uh, February 2nd, is going to be right around 15 degrees, uh, maybe 12 to 15 degrees Celsius during the daytime and more around 6 degrees at nighttime, okay? Celsius, that is. Here in Canada, we have the Celsius. Uh, I know the United States has the Fahrenheit. Um, you could just easily do the conversion there. Anyway, so don't go to Vegas in the middle of fucking January 
thinking that, oh, it's in 30 degree weather. No, 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 it's not like that at all. It's a lot nicer weather than here in northern New Brunswick in the middle of January. You're talking minus 25, minus 30 degrees Celsius. You know, it's fucking blistering cold. But in Vegas, you know, don't go packing your suitcase with bikinis and shorts and t-shirts if you're heading there in January or February. You might want to pack something like I'm wearing right here, like a hoodie, you know, it's, uh, it's not the heaviest material, but you know, it, it, if you're gonna be walking on the strip, you don't wanna to sweat too much. I mean, it's still very nice weather. I, I imagine the weather uh, right around February 17th when I return uh, is going to be right around 20 degrees Celsius, and I'll take that shit over any weather that we get here in Northern New Brunswick in the middle of February, which is still gonna be right around minus 15 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So yeah, always keep in mind the weather in Las Vegas. So here I am at 40 minutes talking my face off. Why do I let it stretch like that? I wish one of you guys can just like go through the phone here and give me a couple of slaps in the face. You know, I could use a good beating. A good little slap in the head there, okay? But anyway, I want to finish again by thanking all you amazing people out there. A thousand subscribers, really? I can't get over that. Me and my wife were talking about that last night. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't believe it. I never thought in my life that it would ever grow to this. Now, I want to also tell you guys that previously... Um, I'm well known in Canada. Um, I used to do something previously that made me very popular. Uh, om almost to the, I don't want to say famous, no, no, that's really pushing it. Um, but I've been asked for my signature before in the past. Like people really knew me well. And uh, I don't do that anymore. I, I stopped doing that, what I did previously. I don't even want to discuss exactly what it was. Um, I guess I got adoration for the wrong reasons. Uh, not the wrong reasons. There was nothing wrong with what I was doing. Anything really illegal or anything bad. Don't get me wrong. It was just something that I didn't enjoy doing, and um, it turned something that I loved into something I hated, and it kind of ruined an aspect of my life. And uh, so I just completely woke up one morning, removed it from my life, shocked the shit out of so many people, and um, yeah, unfortunate. But I love this. I'll, this will never turn into something I won't like. This is actually my therapeutic part of my day. And uh, I never thought I would get this kind of adoration for this. Um, like I said, my YouTube channel started off with me and my wife just wanting to put uh, our own memory bank. You know, if we ever go to Vegas and say, did we ever play this slot machine before? I don't know. Let me go on our YouTube page and type in the name of the slot and see how we did on it. You know, because sometimes in the in the video I'll say like, oh, I don't like this machine or it's a piece of shit, it's gimmicky, blah, 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 or it's really good. We're all, we, would, we would be able to have that feedback and that memory bank to kind of rely on. I guess all the people who like and enjoy the videos uh, coming along for the ride is just icing on the cake, you know, but it's grew into something more than icing on the cake. It's growing into a family-esque type of vibe to it. And uh, actually, that's exactly what it is. It's like we have our own little family here on the Spinning in Vegas channel. Uh, me and my wife are no longer spinning in Vegas. Collectively, we are all spinning in Vegas because that's exactly how I feel. And, and like I said, I guess we could use a few more thousand subscribers there to get that AdSense up so I can give it away to you guys. I keep checking my AdSense every day. It literally goes up by pennies, you know? But It'll let me cash out at a hundred. And I think what I'll do when I cash out at a hundred, I'll, I can make one person happy and give them a hundred bucks or two people happy, give each a 50 or four with 25 or 10 people, 10 bucks. I don't know, we'll I guess we'll decide something to do with it. But one thing for certain is I won't keep it. I don't need the money. I'm gonna give it back to all the people who are showing that love and support to me and my wife. So guys, again, pat yourselves on the back. Uh, I am super proud of all of you and uh, are completely, oh, just in complete awe. I can't get over this. So here's to the next thousand subscribers, guys. More videos coming in the next few days. Uh, we are now exactly 14 days away from when we leave to go uh, back to Las Vegas. Actually, it's on the 17th, but we leave on the 16th because we spent a night in Montreal. So it's coming sooner rather than later. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thanks again, guys.